Lagrangian points. Associated with classical mechanics, the three-body problem belongs to a class of simple dynamics issues. In general, it entails computing the future development of the system made up of three bodies, given their initial positions, masses, and speeds under the effect of reciprocal gravitational attraction. A simplified version of some real-world three-body system scenarios is possible. Numerous well-known mathematicians and physicists have studied simplified problems, such as Joseph Louis Lagrange in the 18th century, Henri Poincaré in the late 19th century, and the Italian Tullio Levi Civita in the 20th century. The theory of deterministic chaos and, by extension, the theory of complex systems are based on Poincaré's work on the three-body problem. There are five points of equilibrium known as Lagrangian points in the case of bodies, planets, and reciprocal circular motion where one of the bodies has minimal mass in comparison to the other two, as is the case for the Sun-Earth system or Earth-Moon system. Three of these five sites, L1, L2, and L3, are exterior to the segment containing the two big bodies as extremes and three are on the line of the two major bodies. These positions are unstable. The final two points, L4, L5, are positioned on the orbit of the planet of intermediate mass, where one is 60 degrees in front of the other. The imaginary segments that connect the two major bodies, along with points L4 and L5, then form two equilateral triangles. L4 and L5 are stable equilibrium points, which means that any objects of negligible mass positioned in these positions will stably orbit the main body for a high ratio between the masses of the two major bodies. Jupiter and the Trojan asteroids orbiting the Sun are examples of this. Join me on this voyage to learn more about Lagrangian points, their function in aiding research into the solar system and our galaxy, and why they are regarded as parking spots for asteroids and satellites. The gravitational forces and the orbital motion of the spacecraft, Sun, and planet interact at five points around a planet's orbit to produce a stable site from which to conduct observations. Following the 18th century Italian astronomer and mathematician Joseph Louis Lagrange, born Giuseppe Luigi Lagrangia, these points are referred to as Lagrangian or L points. Each of these five L points is distinct and useful for studying a variety of topics, as we shall see in the lines that follow. L1. An item will move more quickly the closer it is to the Sun. Therefore, any spacecraft orbiting the Sun in a smaller orbit than Earth's will soon pass by our planet. There is an exception, though, if the spacecraft is positioned squarely between the Sun and Earth, Earth's gravity will pull it in the opposite direction and somewhat neutralize the pull of the Sun. The spacecraft can slow down because it needs less speed to stay in orbit with a reduced pull from the Sun. The spacecraft will move slowly enough to maintain its position between the Sun and the Earth if the distance is just right roughly one hundredth of the distance to the Sun. This is L1, and it is a good place to observe the sun from since the solar wind, a continuous stream of solar particles, reaches L1 about an hour before it reaches Earth. There is where SOHO, the ESA-NASA solar watchdog, is situated. As it stares at the sun, SOHO conducts research on a variety of topics, including the sun's interior, its observable surface, its turbulent atmosphere, and the locations of the solar wind in other parts of the solar system. In 1995, SOHO's launch was so faultless that it needed to consume very little thruster fuel to adjust its course as it traveled to its operating station L1. Every day, SOHO transmits enthralling photographs that help researchers better understand the characteristics and behaviors of the sun experts from all across the world utilize SOHO photos and data to assist them forecast space weather occurrences that may harm our planet. L2 On the night side of Earth, which is outside of Earth's orbit, a comparable effect to that which creates L1 also takes place. Because the Sun is farther away from the spacecraft than Earth is, the spacecraft should orbit it more slowly. However, because of the additional pull of Earth, the spacecraft can orbit the Sun more quickly and keep up with Earth. 
1.5 million kilometers exactly behind the Earth, as seen from the Sun, is L2. L2 is a fantastic location from which to view the wider universe. Since a spacecraft does not have to orbit Earth, it is not subjected to Earth's shadow, which would cause it to heat up and cool down and distort its view. Herschel, Planck, Gaia, and the James Webb Space Telescope are among the ESA projects that have utilized this region in the past or may do so in the future. The goal of the ambitious Gaia project is to create a three-dimensional map of the Milky Way, which will disclose its makeup, history, and evolution. Gaia will offer previously unheard before location and radial velocity observations with the precision required to generate a stereoscopic and kinematic census of roughly 1 billion stars in our galaxy and the whole local group. This equates to around 1% of the star population of the galactic system. NASA published a video depicting the Earth rotating over the course of a year in 2016. The Deep Space Climate Observatory Scav, satellite, which was at L1, used the EPIC camera to take 3,000 images every two hours to create the time-lapse. Along with providing aesthetic views, EPIC offers climate metrics like cloud height, ultraviolet reflectivity, or ozone and aerosol levels to scientists. L3 L3 is located opposite Earth, behind the Sun, just outside of our planet's orbit. The Earth cannot see anything in L3. It gives the opportunity to view the Sun's far side. At L1, L2, or L3, a spacecraft is metastable, or like a ball perched atop a hill. A spacecraft needs to launch rockets frequently in order to maintain what are known as halo orbits near the Lagrangian point because even a small bump or push causes it to start moving away. L4 and L5 the L4 and L5 points, as seen from the Sun, are 60 degrees ahead and behind Earth, respectively, and are therefore close to its orbit. L4 and L5 are immune to disturbances caused by gravitational fields, in contrast to the other Lagrange points. Due to their stability, these areas are prone to the accumulation of various particles, including dust and asteroids. The asteroids that encircle the L4 and L5 points are referred to as Trojans in commemoration of the asteroids Agamemnon, Achilles, and Hector, which are located between Jupiter and the Sun and represent various protagonists in the Siege of Troy. A spacecraft is genuinely stable at L4 or L5, similar to a ball in a big bowl. It orbits the Lagrange point without drifting when gently moved out of place. Because of this, L4 and L5 are used as parking spaces. Assume you are traveling in a spaceship and that you wish to leave it parked and go for a walk at a specific time. Well, for your needs, one of these would be ideal. So far, our discussion has been about the Sun-Earth Lagrange points. However, as we've already mentioned, L points are also present in the Earth-Moon system. Yes, we are also making use of L points in the Earth-Moon system. The Earth-Moon system is connected to five Lagrangian points. In terms of lunar exploration, the two closest spots to the Moon are of tremendous interest. Approximately 61,300 kilometers or 38,100 miles above the lunar surface, L1 is situated between the Earth and the Moon, and L2 is situated on the opposite side of the Moon from the Earth. One rotation about the L1 or L2 point takes roughly 14 to 15 days to complete. The Artemis mission, which launched on February 17, 2007, was the first to orbit the Moon's Lagrangian points. The Artemis P-1 and P-2 satellites were sent on this mission to investigate the Earth-Moon Lagrange points, the solar wind, the plasma wake of the Moon, and the interaction between the Earth's magnetotail and the Moon's own weak magnetic field. The first spacecraft to reach the Earth-Moon L-1 and L-2 Lagrangian points and conduct station-keeping operations there was Artemis P-1. The Artemis P-2 spacecraft entered the L-1 orbit after the Artemis P-1 spacecraft finished its initial four revolutions in the L-2 orbit. 
After three months of making magnetospheric studies from opposite sides of the moon, the two sister spacecraft traveled to the L1 side of the moon, where they both stayed in orbit for an additional three months. The acquisition of fresh scientific data in the Sun-Earth-Moon system was made possible by flying the two spacecraft first on different sides of the moon and later on the same side. Both spacecraft were moved into elliptical lunar orbits in late March 2011, where they spent several years observing magnetospheric dynamics, the solar wind, and the space environment. Here's where the video ends. Thank you everybody for watching.